Hello everyone, hope all is well during these crazy times. Uh, right here I'm going to kind of demonstrate the full um, clamp package from Rapido Technology. So you can order these for a various amount of scopes um, from his website. So uh, today we're going to kind of do the Super Sinlux uh, MC scope here. And I'm going to kind of show you the before and after. So here's the full clamp here. Uh, with the mounting bracket and the front metal jacket with all of the rings and collars um, on it. And here we have kind of a cheaper quick setup if you're anxious to get things going. Uh, these are the Vid Atlanta clamps and you can get these for anywhere from I think 30 to $60, all depending what sizes you need. Uh, this here is about $270 for this full package. Um, full package clamp kit so that'll help you just kind of cover up the scope and make it look more professional than um, this here so I didn't really tighten these on they're just on to show you an example so um, let's get started here so I'm going to quickly just unscrew these off like that and off like that okay so obviously these go uh, on the front and rear of the scope so here I have a step up ring uh, 82 to a 77 for this one and I need the 77 because I'm going to mount a variable diopter as well so I'm able to just kind of mount on the diopter like that I'm going to show you here and then I would be able to just kind of clamp it on and then get ready to go to start shooting just like that okay so uh, we're going to do a more professional look now okay Take that off the diopter. Okay, let's get started here. So here uh, we have the two times Super Sinlux, one of the sharpest uh, two times scopes around. Um, it's a very good scope, has some nice subtle flares on it, things like that. And here is the nice professional looking uh, full package clamp from Rapido Technology. Uh, Mr. Jim Chang, he makes amazing stuff and does a lot for the anamorphic shooters group. Um, so yeah, so let's just get started here. There's two little, um, there's one little screw here for this outside ring. So we're going to quickly take off this, just like that. Okay. And there's a ring collar in here. So this is the ring collar that has a 77 millimeter um, threads on the back. So you can thread up, uh, step down and step up, uh, take in lens. Um, um, step up rings. So I have a 77 mil on here, 255. So this I would just thread onto here like that, just like so. Okay. So that's essentially what I would do. Um, but we'll uh, kind of get to that shortly here. So out comes the collar. Okay. And then here we have um, another collar that's inside that actually goes to the back side of the scope here. So we're going to um, unscrew this. Just like that. And we're going to push out this back collar here. Okay. Try to push these aside. So yeah, so here's the nice front metal jacket to cover it up to make it look professional. And um, a lot more safer, I guess, too. So you're not... Um, making these tiny scuff marks from the vid Atlanta clamps and things like that. Uh, this is an old scope that I had a spare of, so I'm just kind of bringing it back to life and going to make it look good in my um, storage space where I have all my lenses and adapters. So, um, so we're going to start um, by putting in this rear jacket for the two times scope. So it's going to fit in here. So let's do that real quick here. And all it's going to do, there's the threads on the inside here. You really can't get it wrong. And it's a very snug fit. It's pretty um, exact. So you want to make sure that you have it on properly. There we go. And we just uh, snug it up just a little bit, just like that. Done. So now essentially what's going to happen is... Uh, we're going to put this uh, in here like that. So, But before we do that, we're going to put on this collar here. Just want to make sure 
there is a tiny, there is a tiny little groove step up here and a step down. You want to put the, the more, um, it's going to be tough to tell, but each side, there's one that's actually lower than the other. You want the lower to the outside because that's what's going to slide on the collar on here. So if you do it on this side, it can't work. Okay, see? And he makes this pretty straightforward, so you can't really mess anything up because stuff only goes on the one way. So that won't go in, but it goes in on this side here, like that. Okay? So that's what's going to happen now. So we're going to put this like this. That's just going to go over like this. Okay? Uh, we're just going to snug up this little screw here. Just so it's firm and it's not going to move now. Okay? So it's essentially what it's going to look like. And then now we're going to thread in the FMJ to the inside threads. And just like that, scope is on. Obviously we're, we're not, um, we're not straight here, but I'm going to show you a neat trick on how to actually adjust the scope after everything is assembled. And that's the neat thing about these um, full package clamps from Rapido is that you can worry about what the scope alignment is last because um, there's a there's some neat tricks on how to just turn the scope inside without having to take everything all apart. So that's the neat thing about it. So you can make sure it's perfect. Um, so for now, I am though, um, I, am I am just going to get it straight as possible here. Okay. Just so we don't have to do too much adjustments and things like that. So uh, make sure this is down all the way. There we go. And again, to me, that's almost pretty, like, to me, eyeballing it, that's pretty straight. And again, we're going to do these adjustments afterward anyway, because... Um, I'm, well, I'm going to do the adjustment afterward on camera just to make sure that it is um, it is perfectly straight because one tiny little alignment and it's uh, it's off. So that's, that's the hard thing about getting these scopes perfect. So I'm just going to go with that here. It just kind of sits flush as low as it can go. So almost try and make it fall out even though you can't because of that collar on the back. So we're going to tighten it up now. Done. So that's snug. It's not going to move. Uh, these, there's four of these set screws here. Now we're going to tighten those last. So one, two, three, and four. So we're not going to worry about those yet. Uh, we're going to put on this collar now. We're going to put on this back collar, just like this. And that's what's going to kind of rotate the taking lens one once we have it snug all the way on. Okay. So now we're going to put on this collar again. This only goes on the one way. You can't. You can't. Um, get it incorrect and that's on too now just like that on okay so we are going to get ready for the front here I'm going to kind of show you how these adjustments go here okay so scopes in look at that that's much more professional than these. I'd say so anyway. By a long by a long shot. So yeah. Okay. So uh, we're just gonna get on the front variable diopter. So there's seventy seven millimeter uh, female threads in here. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, take this off. The SLR Magic has like a lock collar. If you want it like precise, so I'm just going to take this off for now, just so it can get in there a little bit closer. And again, you can only go so close with this. Actually, you know what? I may have to actually use the use that ring collar, yeah, because I stopped about there. Yeah, so that's pretty much how it go. But you know what? I am going to use the uh, ring collar that comes with the SLR Magic. It's kind of like a lock. A locking mechanism is all it is. So this just threads on. So you kind of put it closer to the end here and then you're just going to thread this on a few times here. 
Not very much. Um, like somewhere around here. So right here is supposed to be the mark. So I'll just do this here. And now I'm going to turn this. There we go. I'm going to get it as straight as I can. And just like that, locked. So there it is there. So we got the front variable diopter on. Okay. And now we're just going to go to the back here. We're going to put on the taking lens. 77 millimeters on the back. And that's on now. And again, see how it's off? We don't exactly have it uh, straight. And again, that's what this locking collar is for over here. We're going to unloosen this a little bit. And then now we can ro rotate this as much times as we need until it's straight because it's just the collar ring in there that just spins and that's what tightens it down. Uh, tighten, tightens it down. So yeah, so uh, this is usually about straight, but I usually don't tighten it up until I have my um, my camera on because then my camera is pretty much what's going to be straight. So right, right there is about straight-ish, straight about. I'm just using this for an example. That's at the top. I can see, I can see my aperture stops. Um, yeah, so that's essentially what you would want to do. And then you tighten up this. And now it's solid. It's not going to move because I tightened up the collar on the inside with this set screw. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and for comparison, there it is. There's a nice setup with the rear metal jacket, or I mean, with the front metal jacket, sorry. There's also a rear metal jacket that you can use to cover up to take in lines. This is the mounting bracket adapter for your rail system, and that just goes on like this, like however so. And you can use this for your rail system for support, obviously. So you can put that anywhere along the sides and things like that. I think it just looks really good and professional. Like here's here's an example. Here's an anamorphic lens from SLR Magic. So here it is for comparison. I mean, look at it. This is as uh, Rapido makes really good professional stuff. Like this is Rapido's. This is a a real anamorphic lens from SLR Magic. So just to kind of give you a comparison here, they're pretty much uh, almost the same size pretty much the same size the damn near anyway um so yeah there it is there and repeat and then there's the rmj that actually covers over the taking lens as well so you don't even see the taking lens and it has the gear stops as well so you can uh control your aperture you just have to make sure you set your taking lens to infinity here because then you're going to be focusing with the front variable diopter here okay so yeah so there it is for comparison I'm just going to show you this for the hell of it, just because it's here. Okay. Yeah. Anamorphic lens, a fully set up anamorphic lens. Okay. And then repeaters, nice fully set up lens. So, um, yeah. Very professional. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And that sure that sure heck beats these vid Atlanta, uh, vid Atlanta clamps, right? So other than that, uh, that's pretty much all I have to show. Uh, feel free to comment and ask anything. I'm going to be doing a few more videos as well for other types of setups and things like that. Um, I do want to show you, though, uh, how to make the adjustment if you need to make an adjustment with the scope. Um, I'm actually going to be putting, um, and you're going to ask, yeah, how do you mount this? If you just want to mount it Well, you have this, uh, piece here and then you put the screws in here and you can, um, mount this to your railroad system using like small rig parts and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's, um, that is pretty much all that I have to show for this video. Um, 
I can show you the adjustment of the scope as well, but you know what? I got this pretty, <laughs> I got the scope pretty bang on in because <laughs> I'm going to do some test runs. But um, essentially what you're going to do is there's these set screws here. And there's also some set screws on this outside piece here. Right here. So I'm just going to kind of show you this now because I don't have everything in. I'm going to unloosen this just a bit. I'm going to keep this straight as possible. And here, oh, I do have to unloosen this. Oops. That's right, because I have it tight. You kind of have to undo the back ones too. Okay. So, this is where you can make the adjustments for your scope while everything is set up. Take off this whole piece here. There it is here. So it's still loose, and you can turn your scope in from from the bottom side here, which is what I'm going to show you here. But I just want to get this off real quick. So there we go. Essentially, um, once it's off, you can rotate the, the barrel only. So the barrel will only rotate just that tiny bit. So you do want to get it as straight as you can. And I mean, I got mine pretty straight. But the real test is what you have it on a camera, tripod, and you start to see if your alignment is skewed and sometimes it's just the tiniest like the tiniest turn so you do want to eyeball it and make sure it's straight as possible how it's going to be mounted and you can just turn this barrel a bit which won't affect anything else a whole lot because you can always make your adjustments to the diopter afterwards so um i could actually keep the diopter on i just wanted to give you um so you can kind of see more than without the uh, variable diopter on. So the whole bottom, this whole base part would be still mounted to the camera. So say my hand is the camera and you can rotate the barrel. So um, on some of the other full cl uh, clamp packages, you can actually just rotate the scope inside because there's an extra back adapter part. Um, or there's an extra, there's a, a, a front, sorry, a front for like the big uh, FED35. So um yeah, so that's essentially what um, what you're gonna do, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Like that's that's all I really have to show, and uh, I hope this video helped. You guys are always more than <laughs> there we go. Uh, free to ask anything at all. Um, I'm usually on my PC video editing and doing all sorts of things, so feel free to message or comment anytime, as I will be around. And that is all that I have to um, say for this video here. Um, so yeah, hope you hope you all have a good night and um, take care, everyone. And we will be talking soon again. Thanks for watching.